What's going on? It's your boy, it's your homie, it's your friend, but most importantly, your future realtor, Ramsey Sorrells here with Realty One Group Choice and Ram Realty, where we turn our clients into friends and our friends into clients. And today, I'm right back at you with another market update. We will be focusing our sights on YZ, but before we get into you know the stats and what's happening in that local market, I'd like to answer a question that was posted to me a couple weeks ago from a longtime friend, and he reached out and said, hey, Ram, you know, I've been watching your videos, very insightful, but if you could answer the question on how do I sell and then buy in this type of market? As we know, this market is crazy. It's very advantageous for sellers, but it's really tough for buyers to, to get their offers accepted in a short amount of time. And so he realized that, you know, the value of his home has increased by $100,000. They have another baby or they want to have another baby and they want to upgrade and they want to take advantage, but they're a little worried about what to do on the buy side. And so I am going to spend some time answering that question right now. So first thing that I'll say that you'll want to do is first thing, sit down with the lender meet with a lender, see what how much house you can afford, buy your credit score, your income, your taxes, and all that sort of stuff. They'll say you are pre-approved all the way up to $400,000. Here's your potential interest rates. And you'll have a really good idea of how much home you can afford and if it makes sense. What you also have a good idea of is do you even need to sell your home in order to buy? Maybe you have tons of money saved to be able to afford a down payment and even some of your closing costs at that price point. And if that is the case, that's the best way to go. Um, I always like to tell my clients, you know, focus on one transaction at a time. And especially in this market, if you can buy before selling, you'll be in really, really good shape. But let's say you do need to sell, you gotta take those proceeds in order to be able to afford your next purchase of your next home. Then what you'll wanna consider is, all right, if we sell, where are we gonna live while we're out you know, shopping and, and searching for our next home? You know, you don't wanna be homeless, that's never a good thing, so you wanna decide, you know, is there a family? Can you move in with your in-laws, right? Maybe you'll take some of the proceeds and you'll put that towards, you know, renting an Airbnb or staying in a hotel, whatever you feel most comfortable with, but you'll need to come up with some sort of game plan of, you know, where am I gonna live as I'm out searching for this next home? Now, that is if you have to sell before you buy. Now, if you don't wanna move, you have a couple other options as well. So what I mean by that is as you're selling your home, you can make the sale of your home contingent upon you finding your next home. That's pretty common, especially right now when sellers have a lot of leverage. But what that does, the one caveat with that is that it makes it a little bit tougher for you to get your offer accepted on the buy side because sellers, they're, they're not super excited when they see that, okay, the, the purchase of my home is contingent upon the sale of that person's home. But it can really work in your favor, especially if you find a flexible buyer that's willing to wait 60 to 90 days for you to go out and find the right home. So that's one option that you can do. You can make it contingent upon the sale of your home, contingent upon you finding the perfect home. I've had a couple transactions where that's been the case. We've had to wait 60 days and, and they got it done pretty quick. Um, so you just have to make sure that you're out shopping as much as you possibly can. Secondly, what you'll want to consider is um, you can do a rent back situation which is also somewhat common in today's market. So what that means is sellers are closing on their home with buyers, but the buyers are not allowed to move in because in their agreement, it's a rent back situation. So what that means is the sellers will actually continue to live in the home that they sold, that they closed on, and rent it back from their future buyers. And so what that looks like is you'll stay in your home that you sold, you'll pay rent to the buyers every single month, and that should really incentivize you to hurry up, go out there and find the, the next home because you don't wanna be paying rent to anyone, especially you know today. So those are a couple options that you have. Now, if you are a buyer, one side note that I'll make, if you are a buyer that enters in a rent back agreement, make sure you always charge rent. Do not let the sellers live there for free, no matter how nice you think they are, always charge them rent, make sure that they have some skin in the game and they have urgency 
to get out of that house and purchase the next one. I heard a couple of horror stories. There was a guy in California who the buyer said, yeah, no worries. You can live here for free as you're looking for your next home. And he just decided to never move. He's like, you know what? I'm living here for free. Why do I even have to move at this point when I'm not paying a mortgage, I'm not paying rent. I'm living in the home I've been living in for years for free, right? So make sure that if you are a buyer in this, that situation, you are charging the rent. So that answers that question. I hope that helps. I'm sure there are some of you out there who might have had that same question. And if you need a realtor who is going to sit you down and give you a great strategy on how to navigate uh, throughout this market, I might know a guy. Just let me know, okay? Uh, moving on, let's talk about YZ. So the reason why I'm choosing YZ for today's market update is because my girlfriend and I have spent quite a bit of time out in YZ. Um, and the reason why is because there's been a new restaurant out there, a vegan restaurant. It's like the vegan version of McDonald's. It's called Stock and Spade. It's right across the street uh, from Crisp and Green in downtown YZ. And it's actually been opened by the same owners of Crisp and Green. Okay, and it's really interesting story how this store and this, this restaurant came about. Okay, so the owners of Crisp and Green have two kids and one of the kids was like mom dad i'm tired of eating grain bowls and salads every single night for dinner i wish i could just have a cheeseburger right mom and dad look at each other and said well what if we opened up a vegan restaurant that kind of was similar to mcdonald's and so they took that idea and they made it into fruition boom you now have stock and spade they serve milkshakes they serve vegan burgers they serve uh, vegan chicken sandwiches huge chicken nuggets, probably about double the size of your regular McDonald's chicken nugget. And uh, it's pretty phenomenal. So we've been uh, at that restaurant uh, a couple times in the last couple months and, and it's definitely one of our favorite restaurants to eat at. And that's why we're focusing on YZ because I've spent a good amount of time out there. So here's what you need to know about YZ. This is gonna be different in terms of uh, what we have what we have explored in the past in terms of price range, days on market, and all that sort of stuff. So if you're looking to purchase in YZ, the average sales price currently is $1,159,373. That is as of May of 2021. That is up 14, basically 15% up over last May. Now, you may be wondering at this price point, is it a seller's market, is it a buyer's market? Well, the original average list price in YZ is $1,134,095, which is actually down 6.4% up over last May. So homes are selling for above list price in, in, uh, in YZ, which is really interesting. But what you'll realize is that month supply is less than six months. It's actually sitting at 3.8 months worth of supply, basically fourth months of supply. Anytime you're less than six months, it's a seller's market. But check this, days on market on average in YZ is 63 days. And that has, that's actually down 25% from last May. So what you have in terms of supply, you have a seller's market. But what you have in terms of days on market is a buyer's market. So buyers actually have a little bit of leverage to come in and say, hmm, your home's been on the market for 50 days. Now keep in mind, it does take a little bit longer. You know, luxury homes take, you know, three, four, five, six, even all the way up to 12 months, even all the way up to two years to get up off the market. So 60 days, that's actually not, you know, that's, that's not really all that surprising for a luxury home, but that might still give buyers some leverage in today's market to you know negotiate, but homes are selling for above list price. So with 63 days on the market, you can't compare that to 63 days on the market for a $250,000 home in Minneapolis or St. Louis Park or anything like that. So uh, last but not least, what I'll leave you with is dollars per square foot on average is 311. So anytime you wanna get a ballpark estimate of what your home is worth, take the dollar amount per square footage in your area, what is the average, and multiply it by the square footage in your home, and that will give you a ballpark of what your home value is worth. Obviously, any upgrades, you know, beds, baths, that also plays a huge role. But if you want a ballpark, that's a good place to start. So that's all I got. I hope this information helps. Hope you enjoyed watching my video. Thank you 
for watching my video and Ram Realty is out.